Ah, look at us. We're back. Another podcast. It's been a while. How's it going? Oh, very good, mate. How are you? Yeah, really well, thank you. It's lovely to be back on here and diving into some more topics in the lovely world of emetophobia sufferers. So today, I want to talk with you all about achievements, right? Okay. An emetophobe going through the process has to be able to recognize that they are making progress. Obviously, it is crucial in order to allow them to feel powerful about overcoming their phobia, right? But a consistent problem that I come across in my practice, but also with conversations with people that are struggling with metaphobia, is they don't feel like they're making any progress. When to everyone else, it's you know clear as day. They've just gone from really struggling to be able to leave the house, and now all of a sudden they're able to go to the cafe with their friends, right? But they don't see that, and for many reasons as to why I imagine we're about to dive into, that's a big problem. So do you want to dive into that a little bit with me today? Why, why do emetophobes struggle to be able to recognize achievements and progress? Okay, so I would say number one is the fact that it's a little bit like if you've got low self-esteem and you and someone and, and someone says something uh, nice to you or, or empowering to you or charitable towards you, it feels like such a small thing that it's hardly worth mentioning. Oh, great, yeah, you know, I I sent my granny a birthday card, you know, as if that's a major thing that's going to contribute to my self esteem. It seems so small that it's hardly worth mentioning. Okay. Also, there is the impatience of wanting to be getting there much faster. I don't want to be looking at these tiny steps, you know. I don't want to hear about tiny steps forward, Joe. I want to hear about major leaps forward, you know. I'm putting so much pressure on myself to overcome this thing, so much pressure on myself to get better. I don't want to see small steps. I want to see massive inroads. The next part of it, I think, is the, is the perfectionism that we've talked about before. And as we know, sometimes that perfectionism can border on can border on uh, self-loathing uh, can border on you know someone being really really hard on themselves to the point mm-hmm. of contempt you know and of course if I'm trying to run a marathon and I'm putting so much pressure on myself to run this marathon and I'm I'm telling myself come on Rob you should be able to run this marathon anyone can run a, run, run a marathon it's so easy to run a marathon and you then say Rob listen mate you've come three feet now you need to really process that I'm going to feel I'm going to feel contempt towards myself that I've only done three feet of 26 miles or something. So there's lots of reasons why emetophobes don't see the small steps they're making and refuse to process the small steps that they're making. And, And the difficulty is you have to do that. I mean, in the negative as well. You know, fair enough. If if they take a step backwards, we also want them to recognise that and process it. Okay, this is not about creating a a false sensation of getting somewhere. We don't want them to do that. We don't want them to pretend they're doing better than they are. We don't want them just to imagine that life is going to be different tomorrow. Or or, or let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope that if we're positive about it, things are going to be better. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is. If a week ago you couldn't leave the house and now you can leave the house and walk to the street corner, that's a massive achievement. Mm. Okay. In the scheme of the marathon, no, of course, of course it's not a giant leap towards where you're going. But it but it's a sign a, re- a genuinely significant step. And recognizing that step bolsters one's confidence and uh, self-esteem and it's empowering and then the next time they take a step they're buoyed by the fact that they've had that earlier step so it becomes a little bit easier next time Mm. in the same way that normal exposure works so I'm getting over a fear of spiders if I if I go into the cupboard one day when that where there's a spider and I tolerate my feelings for a few minutes the next day when I go in it's a little bit easier because I remember that yesterday I went thus far in. I think, okay, well, if I did that yesterday, maybe I can do this. If I've completely blanked what I did yesterday and ridiculed it because it's such a small win for me, 
it's like Groundhog Day. It's like I'm starting afresh every time I do it. So it's really important for those reasons to, um, you don't have to celebrate it. You know, don't have a party. Don't, don't you know, make yourself a cake or something, right? But recognize, very carefully make yourself a cake, recognize that that was a step forward. I haven't done that before. That was a step forward. I'm not gonna say, I've got to do that again tomorrow because that's putting pressure on myself. Okay, but just recognize that today I did a step forward. How did I do that? What enabled me to do that today when I couldn't do it yesterday? Oh, it's because I was more focused. It's because I was more positive. It's because um, I did this before or that before. Make a note of it because then you can repeat that at another time. Hmm. And then you build on that. And what you're doing is you're building a skill set you are creating and building a skill set which gets a little bit bigger a little bit more robust each time you do it so there's definitely something to be said then for when an emetophobe is coming into it with unrealistic expectations of what success and achievement looks like but also comparison right because i see comparison all the time you know if you're talking about being able to go from leaving the house to being able to walk down to the end of the street, even if yep. it's for the first time that they've done that in six months, right? They can still very easily in their head go, yeah, but it's Tony to the end of the street, right? I wanted to go to the park, it's only to the end of the street. Anyone, any, any old lady can walk down to the end of the street. It kind of feels like nothing, right? It just feels so small. Very difficult under those circumstances to be able to note that down on an achievement list and recognise it. Right? And this, and this is why perspective is so important. And this is why the whole concept of their journey, you know, being from Cambridge to London, for example, you know, as long as they are moving forward, they're winning. As long as mm -hmm. they're moving forward, it's inevitable that they're going to learn to thrive and they're going to be able to manage their thoughts, their beliefs and their, you know, their thinking style is much better and overcome their emetophobia, okay? And it, and the smaller the steps, actually, the better. You know, uh, walk before you can run. You, you mm. want to process the small things because the small things then are the bricks that build those foundations, okay? So if someone is giving themselves grief about the fact that, it, oh, I only made it to the corner and I wanted to make it to the park, okay? They want to be looking at their social anxiety. They want to be looking at their self-esteem because they wouldn't do that to somebody else. If this was their, if this was their best friend that had achieved that, if this was their child that had been phobic of leaving the house for for three years and they've managed to walk to the end of the road, they wouldn't say to their child, "Oh, you're such a weakling. You were aiming for the park. You failed." You know, they wouldn't say that to somebody they'd love. They have to treat themselves charitably kindly lovingly because the absence of those things are, are part of the reasons why they have a metaphobia in the first place mm. okay they've got to start treating themselves nicely charitably kindly lovingly the same way they would treat uh someone that they loved with kindness yeah, yeah? So, they'd say well they'd say, they'd say well done yeah i know i know you wanted to get to the park joe but you're halfway to the park Okay, we'll do the park another time. Let's not, let's not look at what you haven't done. Okay, let's look at just getting to the end of the street. And of course, this this begs the question. Then, it's important to set realistic goals for yourself. And sometimes it's best not to set a goal at, at all. You know, in the example of leaving the house. Okay, mm. the goal should be to get a little bit further than I did previously. Right. Mm. If I couldn't leave the house, then even leaving the house and crossing the doormat is a massive step. And then crossing the doormat, turning right and going past next door's house is a positive. And then three or four houses and then to the end of the street. Th those are all massive steps for someone that's frightened of leaving the house. Yeah. So why do you think then that it could be detrimental to throw yourself in the deep end, right? Because a big part of what we're advocating is there's absolutely no need to dive headfirst into no. the deep end. 
as long as it feels like the deep end, right? Where yeah. you can actually dip your toes in, learn how to tread water, and then go from there, right? But why, why would it be detrimental, or could it be detrimental, to a sufferer going through the process for them to decide, you know, I haven't left the house in six months, my friends are inviting me into London at the weekend, and the idea of that scares me to the depths of my core, right? But I feel like that's it, you know, that's the challenge that I've got to do, even though it is pretty damn unrealistic given their current circumstances and temporary circumstances, right? Okay, well, and what they need to do is take a step back, first of all, and realize that one of the things they want to be able to achieve by overcoming emetophobia is doing all the things they'd like to do, like being able to go to their friends at the weekend, okay? Yeah. So the friend says, I've got a party at the weekend, Joe, it'd be lovely if you could come. And you go, oh my God, I'd really, I'd so want to go to that party, but I can't even leave the bloody house at the moment. Do you know what? I'm really going to try hard to get to that party. You're setting yourself up to fail, okay? And when and when you fail at reaching that, you're gonna probably go into a blip because you're gonna beat yourself up. Because, oh, I'm such an idiot. Why did I, I know it's too good to be true. Why did I do this, you know? And, and overcoming a metaphobia, there's a certain fragility to that and you don't want to do that. It's like, te again, it's like teaching a child to, to, to walk. You don't run before you can walk. You wouldn't teach a child to run before you t teach them to walk. You know, if, if, if your partner said, oh, I've been invited to this party Friday, or a client of yours says, I've been invited to this party Friday, I'm gonna really go for it. I would say to them, okay, well look, that, that, that's, a, that's a goal you want to achieve, right? If you wanna go to that party next Friday, in between now and next Friday, you've gotta get a little bit further towards that party, because that's a massive, leap of faith other words that's going to the swimming pool and going straight and diving off the high diving board why would you do that mm. you've got time to dive off the low board and then the next board and then the middle board and the next one and build your build your confidence slowly you know then when you dive off the top board you're only diving off something that's a little bit higher than you dived off yesterday that's easy easy comfortable safe predictable small steps mm. Because another reason to do that, if you think about it, is one of the main things a person is doing by overcoming emetophobia is, is creating good coping skills. And creating good coping skills means having the skill set to manage essentially your emotions in any situation. The best way to learn to manage your emotions is to take small steps. Yep. To take small steps process what you've achieved uh, and of course if, I, if I'm taking a small risk by just jumping off the bottom diving board I'm going to create the lowest level of anxiety the lowest level of fear the lowest level of embarrassment if I don't do it the lowest level of uh, um, beating myself up if I don't do it whereas if I go straight for the middle diving board I'm, I'm going to feel much worse and I'm going to give myself much more grief. Okay, so it's sm small, safe steps. The mm -hmm. other thing is that when people don't process their achievements, they tend to set themselves up for a blip. If you think about what, what a blip is, when someone when someone enters a blip and they, and they very, very quickly generate lots of emotions, they, they dig themselves a big hole and they feel they're never going to get out of it, one of the reasons why they have a blip, or the main reason why they have a blip, is because they've lost all of their perspective. They've lost all perspective in that moment. Well, having a list of everything you've achieved over the last two weeks, two months, two years, would prevent a blip, because it's there in black and white. Oh, I'm never gonna get there, I'm never gonna do this, I'm never gonna get over this thing. Well, hang on a sec, you've got, you've got a spreadsheet here that tells you just how far you've come. You can't say that. Yeah, yeah. You can't say that. Here's the evidence to challenge that. You're just having a bad day, okay? Mm. Today you hoped to get past the, the street corner all the way to the park, and you only made it two feet further. That's okay, that's fine. Yeah, any progress is progress. Any progress is building your self-efficacy, building your belief in yourself, building your skill set, learning to manage 
your emotional responses to these things. Those, those are all part of the process of building self-efficacy, yeah. uh, building yeah. a belief in yourself and your skill set, which is essential to you know, learning to thrive and, and essential to overcoming the metaphobia. If, yeah. pe if people get better at processing their achievements, they're much less likely to go into a blip. Yeah. I'm just putting the final touches, and I know I promised this about a year ago, I'm just putting <laughs> the final touches to a blip, re blip recovery plan, a BRP. It'll be out in the next couple of weeks, I promise you. We'll do a, um, we'll do a podcast about it, right? One of the things about how, how to avoid a blip a big part of that is processing your achievements. Yeah, because you enter a blip because ostensibly you've lost perspective. Yep. How do you keep perspective? You keep perspective by seeing how far you've come, seeing yep. what you've achieved. And you so can, it's massively important. You know, putting myself way back into my metaphobic shoes, right? And if we're thinking about how a, the process of a, a very common and predictable blip looks like it's I wanted to challenge myself right I wanted to go down the street I wanted to go and meet up with friends for a drink and say I lose perspective in that moment and I walk away right I don't say anything to anyone I just disappear because I'm feeling like I'm starting to be out of control and I'm just going to go home because I can't tolerate these emotions and being here any longer right so I'm going to go home that's that's how I see my safe space and that's going to make things easier now, once I get home and the anxiety starts to dissipate because my thinking has totally changed in that moment, that's when it's so easy to hop into that habitual line of, I've got to give myself a really hard time over this because my expectation was I should be at the pub right now, I should be with my friends and I should be pushing myself in order to overcome this emetophobia, but I'm not. I'm sitting here like a big old idiot at home on my bed. God, I'm never getting over this, right? And I've got that. That, that belief in the back of my head that, you know, um, I'm not going to be able to do this, I'm not going to be able to get over it. And right here, this is my evidence that I was looking for to support my belief that I'm not going to get over this. So that's what I'm going to brood over. That's what I'm going to tear the ass out of for the next two days straight and make myself feel awful. But going off of exactly what you were talking about, if I've got a massive achievement list pinned up on my wall in front of my bed yeah. and I'm sitting there head in my hands... And then I can glance up and look at, you know, over the last eight weeks, 30, 40, 50 bullet points of all of these things that I've been able to do, like going to the shops, like getting groceries, like meeting up with that friend for that coffee, like calming down that anxiety when I felt a bit nauseous in the car or whatever it is. And I've got every single one of them there. I'm going to force myself to get out of that headspace because I've got clear evidence in front of me that I'm not a total failure, that I haven't not made any progress. And it'd be so much easier, as you say. Absolutely, 100%. And if someone, and if someone understands how predictable that journey is from Cambridge to London, okay. if they understand how predictable it is that they will overcome their emetophobia by doing these things, right? It, it is inevitable. Okay, it's not it's not just predictable, it's inevitable. You know, like the journey from Cambridge to London. If you're heading south on the M11, you are going to get to London, whether you like it or not. You're going to get there. That's going to happen. It's inevitable. That's going to happen. So, once someone recognises that the journey is inevitable, that success is inevitable, as long as they're following that route, they relax a lot more about the route. OK, and they're much less likely to then be looking for the reason they're going to fail. Oh, I knew it's too good to be true. I knew I was going to be the one that failed. I knew I couldn't do it in time for my wedding or whatever it was. When they understand the predictability of that process more. That tends to be a lot less. It, the, the catastrophizing, the failure of it happens a lot less because, you know, if, if you're heading south on the M11, when you are going to get to London I mean you can see it, it's there it's very difficult to to fool yourself into thinking that I'm never going to get to London when you can then you can see it at the end of the road there it's coming towards me every day when I'm walking a little bit further it's you know the, the buildings are getting bigger it's very difficult to catastrophize not reaching your target when your journey to reaching that target is so clear and predictable so that's important and that and that again 
understanding that journey, seeing that journey as predictable, gives a confidence as you're going through it that allows you to stay calm and avoid blips and things. So even if it's really slow, even if even if I'm not racing towards London in a sports car, you know, I'm cycling or I'm walking to or I'm crawling on my hands and knees, I'm still going to London. Mm. Even if it's going to take me, if I'm only doing you know, 10 metres a day, I'm still on that journey. The outcome is still predictable. I'm still going to eventually get to London. And because there is that predictable eventuality, even though it might be further away or going to take longer to get there than one had hoped, the comfort in the knowledge that you are definitely going to get there helps people to stay much calmer. And ironically, then, the journey is much quicker. Yeah. I mean, you know, the sort of the, the overarching of this of this podcast around struggling to feel like a failure, it makes sense, right? You think about it, because mm. it is so miserable to live with metaphobia. Yes. So it is always for the sufferer, the most important thing in their entire life, entire world to overcome it. So when they're going into a process like this, it makes total sense why they put so much pressure on themselves to not feel like a failure, right? It's not like they're learning to play the guitar for the first time and they're approaching that with a, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to get you know, my finger placement wrong and I'm not going to nail the song overnight and I'm going to have to have multiple lessons with my guitar coach and it's going to be a bit of a journey and they've got a nice, realistic, steady approach to the process because, you know, learning to play the guitar often isn't as important as it is to someone to overcome their emetophobia. Right. So with that in mind, that total avoidance towards feeling like a failure something that i do see all the time is when a client has made a lot of progress they have done something big they've achieved something really significant they struggle to process it because they're afraid that if they don't continue that momentum consistently and come tomorrow or next week and I slip up and I make a mistake and I get it wrong, I can't possibly tolerate that. So it's just not worth me processing this now because I'm afraid of feeling like a failure further down the line. And that's and that's why baby steps are better. Yeah. That that's why small steps are better, right? Because, you know, if I if I don't make it to the top diving board, okay, I haven't lost everything, okay, because I've still made it to the one just off the top diving board. Mm. Okay, the most uh, the most I can fall, if you like, is a meter down to the next board. I did the first board, the second, third, and fourth. I just didn't make the top, so I'm only I've only failed that much. Okay, which is okay. You know that's not too bad. I don't feel so bad about that. You know maybe next week I can come at it again. But if I've jumped straight from never going off a board to setting the goal of going for the top and I don't make it, you're going to feel much more of a failure because yeah. the goal was too big. So there's a difference between a big goal and a success. A success is anything where you've moved forward, anything where you've gained strength, anything where you've stopped giving your power away, anything where you've you've learned something else is gonna help you on your journey. Where any any time that you've, you've uh, disconnected or dissociated or, or, or ignored some unhelpful thinking or done something positive okay any of those things are successes you're, you're building small bricks in these foundations that's why it's so important you know if someone said to you look if you're seeing a client at the moment the client said joe i hadn't told you but um i really wanted to learn to dive and this week i went to the local swimming baths and i didn't go off the first second i went straight to the fourth board and I did it first time, you know, and I feel so good. You say, well, that's absolutely brilliant. Well done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really, really going. But board one would have been enough. Yeah. yeah, board one would have been enough. Let's do small, safe steps. Okay, small, safe steps. If, I, if I'm exposing myself to get over my fear of spiders, okay, and today I didn't actually go in the cupboard and pick the spider up, I don't fall back on failure. I fall back on what I did yesterday. We'll still go in the cupboard and spend five minutes in the cupboard and tolerate the emotions. So it's a minor, minor, minor setback. 
Mm. which means you don't turn it into a blip. You don't go, oh, my God, I failed. I know I was an idiot. I know it's too good to be true. I know I was never going to get there. The smaller the step, the, the, the smaller the setback when you, if you don't make the next step. And there are going to be times when you don't make the next step. Yep. You, you can't always move forward mm. because you've got a headache that day or you're tired because you didn't sleep very well or something else is going on. Okay, so you've got to accept that there are going to be ups and downs on that journey. Yeah, and some depends. days, some days you will sit on that road to London and not move. Some days, because there's an accident, you've got to turn back two miles and take a detour. But if you're confident in understanding that journey and you're tolerant around your emotions, you can manage your emotions to go, listen, Joe, it's a minor setback, just got to go back one mile do a detour within a couple of days i'll be back on track that's no problem and you can manage your reactions to that if if it's a small step yeah yeah and it only ever really turns into a problem to not do something the way that you wanted it to if it's being approached with a bit of a do or die mentality yes right yeah. where losing that perspective that Tomorrow's still going to come, right? You can absolutely go and do it again. And just because you didn't do it today, it might just mean that you need to continue to work on your skill set just a little bit more by doing everything that you've been doing up until this point. And then this time next week, maybe it'll be a, a cakewalk and not yeah. a problem, right? And if you do find, if you are that person that keeps beating yourself up and keeps wanting to beat yourself up, spend more time at the moment focusing on your self esteem. Mm than making huge segue into overcoming metaphobia because that's just going to keep biting you every step of the journey. Yep. Yeah. You know, if, if, if you keep putting yourself down, if you keep looking for ways to beat yourself up, come back and take a harder look at the self-esteem mm -hmm. and work harder on the self-esteem because that, you know, you, you, uh, the self-esteem, the perfectionism, that will bite you every time, you know, if, you, if you're just waiting to pounce on yourself, the moment you make the, the slightest error, that's going to make that journey just harder for you. And you don't, you don't need that. Why would you do that? Mm. Okay, you've got yeah. to work. You will not overcome your metaphobia unless you've created stable, internal, predictable self-esteem for yourself. Yeah. You yeah, you, you've got, to, you've got to overcome your metaphobia by learning to thrive. Yeah, by, by building good self-esteem by overcoming some social anxiety by feeling good about yourself by having self-efficacy by having a skill set by being able to manage your emotions and your emotional responses to calming down that black and white thinking that that perfectionist thinking all of those things you have to do all of those things well you don't have to do all of those things but the journey is significantly easier and quicker if you do all of those things yeah and it is a journey not a sprint yeah right it is, a, it is a steady journey, and I know that every metaphor wants to hold their breath and sprint to the end for obvious reasons, but the quicker that you can get into the mentality that it is a bit of a journey, and the journey will have a few hurdles that you'll need to navigate your way through, but that's okay, because you can still keep going along anyway. I think this podcast, it ties in nicely, if anyone's listening to this and they're resonating with a lot of what we're talking about, we also recorded a fantastic podcast on why you can't fail at the program. That's more centered around your approach to actually coming into the program. This today has been more around achievements and processing those achievements. But either way, the, the, the two of these podcasts, they tie in nicely. So it would be well worth your time if you haven't listened to it already to go back and spend half an hour or so listening to that podcast as well. I've got a question for you, Joe, on mm. that note. You think about you think back to when you had emetophobia, and let's say you were offered a uh, a two month program that has a ninety percent chance of success, or a six month program that was absolutely guaranteed to work. On your best mate's life it's guaranteed to work mm. what would you rather have oh. 
knowing myself as well as I do and remembering how I was way back then, it would have been a two month. Mm. It would have been a two month because I couldn't stand living another second with the phobia that I was living with. And 90% were odds that I would have been willing to take if that meant I didn't have to spend an additional four months living in that pit. Yeah, within yes. two months. Yeah, and, uh, and, and that's probably not the best um, decision to make, is it? You, 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 are, you are, well, thing is you were still young, right? Mm. But let, let's, yep. say you, let's say you were 50 years old mm. and you've had it for 40 years Mm. The sensible decision would have gone gone for the more predictable yeah. program, the guaranteed program at six months, yeah. because even though I know I've got to put up with this for another six months, I know it's over at that point. Yeah. I I know just as much as I know that that's my car key. I know it's over at that point. So bring it on. Yeah. Five months, four months, three months, two months. Any time now, we're going to get to that date in my diary when I know it's guaranteed. It stops. Mm. The confidence whilst you're going through the program that person would go through the program in a much more relaxed calm way mm, because yeah. it, because they know that it's guaranteed to stop at that point and that's why people that are going through the program understand the predictability of the journey more have a much easier time of going through it there's a great one of the really earliest testimonials we have by an american lady and she she's doing a recording I think she'd had her first session or she just got her manual and she's in her car recording this testimonial about 10 11 years ago Laura I think was it and, and she, she's she's one. saying I already know that this is going to work you know this this is going to work for me and be, because she felt like that early on it was a breeze for her going through the program because she was calm and relaxed because she knew it's inevitable in a few weeks time I'm going to be over this thing I know that this is going to work for me so the confidence in what you're doing and the confidence in the program has a massive impact on how easy and calm and, and predictable that program is for you mm -hmm. which is which again which comes down to partly understanding why the Thrive program works for metaphobia but partly making sure you're processing your achievements yeah and that that steady approach it's important to remember that it's still significantly less time spent overcoming it than it is spent living with it for the majority of the metaphobia sufferers. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Lovely. Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's a really good one. Definitely, if you are listening to this, go back and listen to why you can't fail at the program ties all of this really nicely together yeah. but thank you Rob, lots of good insights there and I think a lot of people will get a lot from this one so I hope you've enjoyed everyone mm -hmm.